Welcome to Police Custody Basics and in this short video I was asked to review a custody record and give some general feedback. So here I'm just extracting a bit in relation to the risk assessment, the initial risk assessment conducted by the custody sergeant of the detained person. So the person is asked about health and well-being and they disclose that they have PTSD, ADHD and autism. So here then we have identified some issues. They also then identify some medical risks of reflux and IBS. Now they also say that they self-harm when they feel overwhelmed and self-harm is a, an issue for police custody. So we've got PTSD, ADHD, autism, self-harm, ga gastric reflux and IBS. So for me that indicates a level of risk. However in this particular case the custody sergeant has deemed that this is level one observations, the lowest level possible. Now level one is allocated to a detainee for whom no reasonable foreseeable risk is identified. Now if there's suggestion of self-harm then the minimum level for self-harm is level three and that then means they need reviewed by the healthcare professional. Now also in relation to the fact that this person has identified various um, risks to the custody staff, the College of Policing Authorised Professional Practice states that a detained person medical form needs to be completed if the person answers yes to any of the medical history questions. So this person has clearly answered yes to the questions. So it also further then says about self-harm, if self-harm is identified in all cases the healthcare professional should provide input for the care plan. So for me in relation to this risk assessment the level one decision by the custody sergeant has to be wrong and at no point do they involve the HCP um, this person is vulnerable through um, risk and that's medical risk factors and also in relation to their mental well-being. There's, there's issues there for vulnerability. Um, there would also then need to be considered for a suitable appropriate adult and also then about um, special considerations and adaptations in relation to being given extra time to understand their rights and entitlements um, and also thinking about the appropriate adult to get them there as soon as possible because the appropriate adult can act as a form of support to the person and that therefore is reasonable adjustments for that person at custody. Obviously subject to the risk assessment because if the detained person is being violent or likely to become violent then the custody sergeant would have to reconsider. But certainly in relation to those risk factors or red flags, I can't see how this person meets a level one observation regime and considered to be no risk when so many risk factors have been identified. Thank you for joining us at Police Custody Basics. My name's Joanne Caffrey. Follow us on YouTube.